And now uh, we are pleased to have one of our great partners from the Department of Interior join our conference. And uh, before I uh, introduce her, I, I do wanna take a moment to thank uh, Dante and our entire NCEI uh, staff and team for the incredible work that they've been able to not only hear and understand the vision of the board, but to successfully execute it, no matter the barriers and challenges. Things happened this year and we uh, are so very grateful for the support of our, our incredible staff. Thank you, Seal Quill. Uh, our, our first speaker is Secretary Deb Holland. She made history when she became the first Native American to serve as a cabinet secretary. She is a member of the Pueblo of Laguna and a 35th generation New Mexican. Before her historic appointment as Secretary of Interior, Secretary Holland was one of the first Native American women to serve in Congress. And I just wanna reflect a little on the one meeting I was able to attend in Washington DC this last summer. And the very first time I had an opportunity to sit down with her in her office at Interior. And we all have been down that long hallway to the secretary's office and we've seen the, the paintings of all those secretaries that have served uh, over a century. At the end of that hallway, I saw a door open and there stood Secretary Holland. And although she was masked, I could definitely see a smile. I could see a twinkle in her eye and I could see a welcoming uh, and warm spirit. As we approached her down that hallway, I was literally stopped in my tracks. I actually took a couple of pictures and it was just truly, I knew it was a moment I would never forget for as long as I live. When we walked into the meeting, I could feel the presence of all of those leaders and ancestors that have gone before us that just simply prayed that Interior would hear us and see us. And there we were. I could feel the presence of all of our advocates that worked tirelessly to ensure that President Biden appointed a Native American to the cabinet. The power in that room was, was indescribable. And I, I must say, when we left uh, her office, uh, well, first of all, the meeting just went very quickly. It, it, we were prepared to make our case. Every point we made, she understood. Every point and issue and challenge we raised, she understood. So when I walked away from her office, it was quite clear. We didn't have to persuade. There was not one degree of separation between our understanding and her understanding. And so I just wanted just to share that experience with you to reflect on how incredible it is to have uh, a Secretary of Interior in, in Deb Holland. I'm honored to introduce our very first Native American U.S. Secretary of Interior, Secretary Deb Holland. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, President Sharp. Uh, I didn't expect to tear up <laughs> even before my remarks started. Um, uh, the memory of having you in my office um, for the first time will stay with me for a very long time as well. And, and I hope you will return. Um, I, am, I was so proud to hear you deliver the State of Indian Nations address. And I've heard it before in person. Uh, your words and leadership at NCAI are a, an incredibly strong reminder that we're making progress as Indigenous people. Your words shed light on why the best solutions come within our communities. Representative Davids, your update from Congress was insightful, to say the least. I miss seeing you at work every day, but I'm glad the House Chamber continues to benefit from your leadership. Your passion for making people's lives better through investments and in infrastructure is one that we can absolutely all get behind. Seeing two fierce women at the top of the program speaks volumes about the leadership of indigenous women. You both inspire me, thank you. I'm incredibly grateful to NCAI for your engagement on the issues that Interior is working on and for the opportunity to share an update during your 2022 Executive Winter Council session. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the anniversary of a significant transition in our country, a transition that brought a new president into office a little over a year ago, and with him, a dramatic shift from the previous four years, a shift in focus, a shift in approach, and a shift in our view of the world. The Biden-Harris administration came in facing the interlocking challenges of this public health emergency, the climate crisis, economic uncertainty, and a history of racial injustice. 
We knew that these challenges would not be solved overnight. In fact, we knew these challenges would not be solved in a one short year. But that didn't stop us from taking bold steps to address the stark challenges that communities across our country face. It reminds me of the many lessons I learned from my grandpa as we worked in the cornfield. By the time my siblings and I arrived in Laguna during the summers, the stalks had already sprouted from the ground. As we tended to the corn throughout the season, we watched the stalks open their leaves, the tops begin to flower, and then ears of corn form over time. We're at a moment when we're experiencing the bounty of our ancestors and the efforts of the many leaders on whose shoulders we stand. But after each harvest comes a new planting season. As we begin this new era, we at Interior have taken a running start to blaze a path toward justice and healing for indigenous people and communities across the country. Sowing those seeds is no easy task. You must prepare the earth, consider how much water you'll need, perform the proper ceremonies, and carefully place your seeds so that they grow into strong stalks. Over the past year, the Biden-Harris administration carefully sowed the seeds that will benefit Indian country for generations to come. Assistant Secretary Brian Newland will deliver some important updates on our efforts during his presentation later during the session, but it's important to take a moment to reflect on what we accomplished together and to celebrate those wins. Those wins represent decades of hard work by Indigenous people who deserve to be respected, consulted, and heard, actually heard, before decisions are made. We agree that this is part of a winning strategy. The work we were able to accomplish this year would not have been possible without a president who on day one set the tone for the federal government's relationship with tribes. With a commitment to an all of government approach to tribal consultation, the re-established White House Council on Native American Affairs committed to ensure that every office and every agency had a plan to engage with tribes on issues that impact our communities before policies are created. I'm honored to co-lead the council and to bring into cabinet discussions our perspectives and our learning. This has been a big first year of the Biden-Harris administration and for Indian country. There were moments that will be part of our collected memory for generations to come. We worked together to get billions of dollars in American Rescue Plan funds out quickly to protect our elders, young people, and communities from this terrible virus. After years of calls to action and tremendous response from Indian country and our allies, the president restored protections of Bears Ears National Monument and thus a win for our cultural heritage. In my remarks on the White House lawn, I acknowledge the indigenous land that the White House sat on. And I stated that President Biden would protect this sacred place for every child of the world. We were proud to center indigenous knowledge in discussions at the United Nations Summit on Climate Change in Glasgow, Scotland, and joined international indigenous leaders on the world stage. We kicked off the first White House Tribal Nation Summit in four long years so that we could create policies based on the input of indigenous leaders. We celebrated President Biden's transformational bipartisan infrastructure law and its $13 billion investment directly into tribal communities. We welcomed long pursued proposed protections for Chaco Canyon. And I was honored to travel there with tribal leaders to honor our ancestors under the wide blue, beautiful New Mexico skies that welcomed our celebration. Watching young children in the Cherokee Nation unlock the wisdom that their native language holds alongside First Lady Jill Biden was an absolute joy. We outlined initiatives to revitalize native languages and it is so encouraging to have a First Lady and a president who see travel to Indian country as more than just a field trip, but as a meaningful way to engage tribal nations and indigenous people on their lands. 
Those moments were all made possible by the years, decades, and even millennia of work that Indigenous communities have engaged in. I am here because my ancestors fought for and protected a future for me. Over the past year, alongside Indigenous leaders, Interior planted seeds for moments that are yet to come. We planted seeds to restore tribal homelands and empower tribes to make decisions for their communities, to put the power of the federal government behind our work to address the missing and murdered Indigenous peoples crisis, to heal from the terrible and intergenerational impacts that Indian boarding schools have had on our communities for so many decades, to close the digital divide and connect Indigenous communities to broadband internet, to ensure our nation's lands and waters are welcoming places for everyone and do not perpetuate the legacies of oppression and stereotypes with derogatory names. To honor and respect indigenous knowledge in our fight to address climate change and to include indigenous people in the clean energy economy. With time and care, we will reap the benefits of these initiatives and our communities will feel the positive impacts of them all. None of these things would have been possible without President Biden and an entire administration that is committed to living up to our promises to tribal nations. Progress also relies on our continued work with members of Congress from both sides of the aisle to deliver for the American people. Just last week, we saw important action on the seeds I had the honor to help nurture during my time in Congress with the introduction of the Violence Against Women Act reauthorization bill. This proposal includes many historic tribal provisions. Among them, tribes can prosecute long-awaited sex trafficking, stalking, child and sexual violence crimes, and finally, have full access national crime information systems. This is an important step forward as we seek justice in Native communities. We have so much to look forward to, including the hard work it takes to tend to those seeds that we planted last year. But we can't do it alone, and we don't want to do it alone. This administration and my amazing team at Interior will continue to rely on NCAI and other tribal organizations to support this work share insights and continue their advocacy so that we get it right. We're committed to continuing to engage through tribal consultations at every agency level and through tribal leader meetings with the White House Council on Native American Affairs, like the one we held at the end of January. And I'm happy to share that the seed we planted to establish a direct avenue of communication between tribal governments and the secretary's office is beginning to sprout. Today, I'm opening the nomination process for tribal representatives to serve on my secretary's tribal advisory committee, or as we call it, STAC, on behalf of each respective Bureau of Indian Affairs 12 regions. The staff will continue our work to uphold the federal trust responsibility and engage in consistent and meaningful nation-to-nation -nation discussions. Through the STAC, Elected or appointed tribal leaders will have a direct line to share information, provide recommendations, address concerns, and facilitate robust discussions. As we look forward to the future and building a better America, I know that with the determination of our tribal communities and the momentum of a forward-moving administration, we can make sure the future for Indian country is right. Dawa and. And thank you again, President Sharp, and thank you everyone for being here. It's an honor for me to be with you. Great, thank you so much, Chikatsi. Uh, okay, at this point, uh, Secretary, do you have um, a moment to take some questions? I, uh, President Sharp, I am so sorry. I am on travel at the moment and we are headed out the door to head to my next event. I am, uh, as I said, I'm honored to be here and, um, and thank you all so much. Yes, yeah, Sia Kuil, thank you. Safe travels, be well. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> what, an, what an opportunity and what an engagement. Um, thank you so much, Secretary Holland.